Hi guys, this is the last lecture before your Hell Week next week. And for hematology, our topic for today, disorders of primary hemostasis. Ang outline natin, uunahin natin yung mga disorders of your, ve of your blood vessels or vasculopathies. And the next, quantitative disorders. Quantitative means uh, abnormal numbers or uh, disorder in or derangement in platelet count. And then qualitative naman is derangement in platelet function. So we will discuss uh, these topics later on. But I have a few reminders. So as a reminder, you have a task. You will have a 20-item self-test. Okay? Bago nyo ako i-bash. Self-test naman to. Hindi to recorded. You can, uh, you have to accomplish this para malaman ninyo kung paano ako magtatanong para dun sa prelim exam natin. No? Halos same lang ang thought. Pero, syempre, iba pa rin yung um, tag dito. Yung pagkaka-construct ng tanong. But anyway, you have to accomplish this self-test before 5 p.m. of February 12. Okay, sa inyo na yan. Hindi na yan recorded. Gawin, gawin nyo na lang yan na reviewer. Okay, recall natin yung hemostatic mechanisms. So, hemostasis basically means inhibition of bleeding. Hemo means blood. Stasis means to stop. So, we have two general mechanisms. Unang-una is the primary hemostasis. The primary hemostasis includes, number one, vasoconstriction. So, wag tayo magpapalito in bleeding events, vasoconstriction yung first step. Pero in inflammation, vasodilation. The next few processes involves the platelet itself. So, anong unang gagawin ng platelet? It is to adhere to the damaged blood vessel. Next, platelet activation. Ano ma-activate yung mga proteins no? uh, from the inactivated from going to the active form. The next, platelet secretion wherein the granules uh, that supposedly um, for hemostasis no? masisecrete out of the platelets. Then after that, magpiplatelet aggregation. So, magkakaroon ng um, binding with uh, all, all other platelet na dumating dun sa area of bleeding. And the final product of primary hemostasis is your platelet plug. Next uh, mechanism is the secondary hemostasis. And this involves the play, the roles, the roles of your coagulation factors. Meron tayong tatlong roles, di ba? Meron tayong uh, for intri intrinsic pathway, extrinsic pathway, and common pathway. And then, ang end product ng second secondary hemostasis is the fi uh, stable fibrin plot. So, let's proceed with the processes and compounds involved in primary hemostasis. So, ang focus ko dito sa lecture na to is the primary hemostasis. Ang disorders of secondary hemostasis will be moved to your midterms. Okay? So, dito tayo muna. So, first process is vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction is initiated by these two compounds called serotonin and thromboxane A2. So, serotonin is also known as your 5-HT or 5-hydroxytryptamine. So, mag tayo magpapalito, okay? Sa terjon, ito laging gamit na name. Well, in Rodox, ito. So, parehas lang itong dalawang ito, okay? So, next, platelet adhesion naman. Ano ang ginagamit na protein? It is the von Willebrand factor. So, von Willebrand factor, ano naman ang kailangan na receptor in, to be able to activate the platelet adhesion process? It makes use of glycoprotein 1B9 and 5. Okay? And then, um, ang platelet not also um, 
bind with the blood vessels but also adhere with collagen in vivo inside the body and in glass in vitro. Kaya ang ginagamit natin na bacutainer tubes, lalong lalo na if it, it, it involves platelet count, hindi tayo pwedeng gumamit ng glass kasi didikit doon ang platelet causing pseudo-thrombocytopenia or fake or false thrombocytopenia. So, wala akong mabibilang na platelet count. Next, next process is platelet activation. Platelet activation also makes use of your thromboxin A2 and PAF. PAF stands for platelet activating factor. So, nasa name itself. So, wala, hindi tayo malilito dyan. But, your thromboxin A2 na uh, have to take note, dalawa ang kanyang involved na processes. Unang-una, uh, vasoconstriction and platelet activation. Okay? Next process is platelet secretion. And this involves the secretion of the granules. So, we have two types of granules in platelets. We have alpha granules and dense granules. Yung alpha granules, it... Uh, it includes all the growth factors and even some of the clotting factors. Basta weird ang name, no? Sila ay yung mga uh, alpha granules. Pero ang dense granules, tilim ma lang yan, no? Meron tayong mnemonics na tapas. So, it, uh, it, it stands for calcium, ADP, or adenosine diphosphate, pyrophosphate, ATP or adenosine triphosphate, and your serotonin. Okay? And among these five um, compounds, meron isa dito na involved din sa coagulation process. It is the calcium. And then the last process is platelet aggregation. Platelet aggregation makes use of your fibrinogen with the use of receptor called glycoprotein 2B3A. And in other, um, or in vitro, no, outside of the body, platelet also aggregates using your collagen, ADP, and epinephrine. So, in aggregometry, or yung test for platelet aggregation, ito rin ang ginagamit na reagents. So, take note, don't be confused with the function of von Willebrand factor and fibrinogen. Von Willebrand factor is plate for platelet adhesion, while fibrinogen is for platelet aggregation. Okay? And pagdating sa mga receptors involved, von Willebrand factor uses glycoprotein 1B95, fibrinogen 2B3A. So, must know itong mga to. Okay? So, enough with the recalls. Let's proceed now with our lecture proper. Okay? So, unahin natin yung mga disorders of your blood vessels o tinatawag natin vasculopathy. So, vas vasculo means blood vessel. Path patho means disease or disorder. So, we have six mechanism or etiologies or causes of vascular disorders. So, number one, mechanical force or any external force that can damage your blood vessel. Malformation. Okay? Madalas itong mangyayari sa mga um, while in utero, o tinatawag natin na sa loob pa ng uterus yung bata, meron nang nagka, uh, nagkakaroon ng um, disorder that causes malformation of the blood vessel structure. Next, your vasculitis, vascular obstruction, and then disorders of your perivascular tissue that may be hereditary or namamana or acquired. Okay? Then lastly, we will, dis we will also discuss purpura due to infection. So, babalikan natin yung ating bakte and some of the uh, viruses that can cause purpura. 
So before you investigate for the main cause of vascular disorder, you have to determine ano ba yung usual presentation ng isang patient na may vascular disorder. So we have four basic presentation. And uh, alamin natin kung ano yung mga difference ng bawat isa. So first, Bruising or ecchymosis. Ecchymosis is almost uh, 1 cm or larger and it varies in color. No? From yellow to green or up to purple red. Minsan, flat din yung mga yan. Okay? So, hindi sila madalas uh, palpable no? na nakaangat sa skin. Unlike the next presentation called hematoma. Hematoma is much more severe than ecchymosis dahil mas marami siyang extravasated blood. Ano ibig sabihin ng extravasated blood? Lumabas na blood out of the blood vessels. And it usually uh, recollects into underneath the skin. Kaya meron tayong tinatawag na palpable na hematoma or kaya mong kapain. And minsan, no, itong hematoma, it also occurs in the organs or uh, some of the tissue inside our body. It tends to clot, no, it will form a parang capsule surrounding the organ which makes it more uh, severe or fatal sa isang pasyente. Next uh, presentation is petechiae. Petique is only pinpoint in size. Okay? Hindi yan lumalagpas ng 1 mm in diameter. It is usually reddish to purplish in color. No, Madalas mo yan makikita sa balat and mucous membrane. Ano ibig sabihin ng mucous membrane? Makikita mo yan sa um, oral cavity, ilalim ng dila, yung mga yan. And minsan, ma makikita mo sila sa, uh, tag dito, yung ilalim ng mata, no? Yan. Pwede yan uh, basta yung mga superficial na mucous membrane, doon mo sila ma-appreciate. Lastly, your purpura. Purpura is purple, purplish in color and typically greater than what, uh, 3 mm or mo, uh, more than 1 cm din. Okay? And in yung difference between purpura and ecchymosis is that purpura dumadami yan no akala mo ra, nagmumukha silang rashes na malaki okay okay and it also occurs in mucous membrane and skin na katulad ni petechiae si ecchymosis pwedeng single ano lang yan single spot lang yan si purpura madami so mamaya papakita natin yung mga conditions um presenting this kind of symptom or signs. Okay. Una sa ating etiology is mechanical force, which is common natin nakikita yan sa ER or usually uh, in everyday uh, lives. Okay. Nahin natin itong first picture na to. So, itong patient na to, ang kanyang history is that madalas siya magbuhat ng mabigat na bag. Okay. So, nagkaroon na siya ng mga purplish, almost pinpoint in size. So, anong klaseng presentation ito? This is an example of petechiae. So, this is commonly uh, seen in fair-skinned individuals. No? Yung mga madalas magbuhat ng mabigat na bag or mahigpit na nagsusot ng mahigpit na brasher, okay? Meron din na kapag matagal yung pagkakabit ng tourniquet mo sa kanila, nagkakaroon sila ng ganito, no? Na petechial rash. But this kind of rash is not itchy or pruritic, okay? So yun yung difference between allergies and this type of rashes. Next example is in this picture, okay? This is an example of ecchymosis. And in this picture, it uh, presents as what we call raccoon eyes. 
Raccoon eyes in clinical term is periorbital ecchymosis. Madalas to makita sa mga nabugbog na patient, no? Yung mga pinagtripan sa kanto, yung mga yan. And meron din kay kumalala niyo, meron tayong artista na nabugbog and nagpresent siya as this. Search niyo na lang, okay? Anyway, so let's proceed with the next picture naman. This is actually a dead patient no um dumating siya sa ER na medyo nangangapal yung kanyang left arm kung papansin niyo very deformed na yung left arm niya due to extreme ex, uh, extreme levels of extravasated blood no madaming madami na yung blood na tumakas out of the blood vessel so what, this is an example of hematoma and in this patient, madalas kinakamatay nila ito, no? Due to kidney failure. Bakit nagkakaroon ng kidney failure? Because this extravasated blood can pass through your kidneys, no? And nephrons cannot handle too much blood, uh, too much filtration of blood. Diba nga sa ihi, hindi pwedeng mag-pass through ang blood. So, kailangan magtrabaho further ng nephron to filter these blood cells. So, in return, nagkakaroon ng kidney failure. Okay? Next naman, discuss natin yung mga malformation. And in this case, hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia. Telangiectasia simply means dilated superficial vessels. Ectasia means dilatation. Okay? And it is also known as Osler Weber Rendu disease. So, uh, the, um, this the condition is most common inherited vascular disorder. And in this case, no, yung ating malformation is caused by the deficiency of your smooth muscle in the blood vessels. So, itong mga telangiectasia, makikita natin sa mga uh, mucous membrane, lalong-lalo na sa oral cavity. So, dito sa first, uh, na to, sa first set of pictures, itong left side, no? ito yung my HHT. Okay? Makikita natin sila under the lower lip and dun sa tongue. So, kapag uh, ang normal, actually, ito dapat. No? Nagamot na siya dito sa right picture. So, kung mapapansin nyo yung difference, no? meron tayong mga petechial rash supposedly no kapag may HHT Next disorder is moya moya disease or also known as chronic cerebral vasculopathy So from the name itself ang problem is yung mga blood vessels sa brain okay and madalas na, na dadala mo yun hanggang pagtanda but in uh, other cases, no, nagkakaroon ng malformation na too severe that may cause stroke lalong lalo na sa, sa mga bata. Okay? Moya Moya disease is actually discovered in Japan. No? And the name itself is derived from the um, angiography pictures. Ano ibig sabihin ng angiography pictures? Ito yung mga parang CT scan ng blood vessel. Okay? So under this type of imagery, Imaging, may ma-appreciate natin yung puff of smoke appearance. So, halimbawa dito, ito yung normal, no? And then, kapag meron tayong uh, moya-moya disease, nakakaroon ng, um, tag dito, release of the blood out of the blood vessel. No? Kung makalat kanyon yung blood dun sa surrounding um, structures. So dito mas makikita natin yung puff of smoke. Okay? Ito yun yung ito yung may malformation na blood vessels. So tumatakas yung blood, no? Nagkakaroon ng blurry uh or tinatawag natin puff of smoke appearance under angiography. Next condition is hemangioma thrombocytopenia syndrome or also known as Kasabak merit syndrome. In this case, no, meron tayong hemangioma. Ano ibig sabihin ng hemangioma? 
two more siya ng mga blood vessels plus bagsak na counts ng platelet or also known as thrombocytopenia. And in um, ma madalas din na nagkakaroon sila ng mga bleeding symptoms such as petechiae purpura and purpura. So, in clinical setting, yung mga may kasabak merit syndrome, actually lumalabas yan out of the womb, no? daladala nila yung hemangioma. And possible yan na lumalaki ng lumalaki. No? Kasi patuloy yung blood supply dun sa tumor ng blood vessel. Okay? So, in this case, ito yung hemangioma niya. So, kailangan na yan putulin eventually kasi yun yung definitive treatment dun sa uh, enlargement of the hemangioma. So, kailangan putulin yan para hindi na further lumaki yung tumor. And yung madalas, makikita natin sila, no? Nasusurvive naman nila yan, pero kailangan lang ng prosthesis. Okay? Next naman is vasculitis. Vasculitis means inflammation of the blood vessels. Itis means inflammation. Vascul uh, vasculo means blood vessels. And vasculitis is brought about by the exposure of abnormal proteins. Itong mga abnormal proteins, it will attract all inflammatory cells or inflammatory proteins dun sa site of blood vessel, making it so weak and narrow. Kung ikaw compare natin yung normal versus uh, blood vessel with showing vasculitis, no? Ito, no, medyo normal pa yung shape, no, ng blood vessel. Dito naman, mas constricted na dahil dun sa attraction of the inflammatory cells and proteins along the uh, lumen of the blood vessel. So, mas pangit yung blood flow sa ngayon. So, the following are example of vasculitis. Unahin natin si Hinoxion Lane Purpura. Hinoxion Lane Purpura is also called as allergic purpura or anaphylactoid purpura or purpura rheumatica. So, lahat ng yan, sinonymous sila sa isa't isa. Okay? Pero in this case, no, wala talagang ma-identify na source of allergy. Kaya... Uh, kahit na tinawag siyang allergic purpura. Pero, under microscope, no, ma-appreciate natin yung deposition of a specific immunoglobulin um, responsible for allergic reaction. And this immunoglobulin is the immunoglobulin A. Okay? So, so, sab so, sobrang daming immunoglobulin A, tinawag na rin siyang allergic purpura or anaphylactoid purpura. In this case, uh, madalas mo rin sila makita sa mga bata up to teenage years, no? 2 to 20 years old. And they manifest the following. Number one, palpable purpura. Nakaangat na mga purpura rushes. So, madalas yan makita sa legs, no? Sa legs or sa feet. Makikita mo yung mga purpura nila. Next, yung arthralgia. Arthralgia means... Pain in your um, joints. Kaya ang tawag natin dyan also is purpura rheumatica. No? Akala mo may rheumatoid arthritis. Yung pala, hinoksyon lang purpura lang pala. Next naman, nagkakaroon din ng mga abdominal pain. And this abdominal pain is brought about by nephritis. Ano ibig sabihin ng nephritis? Inflammation of the kidneys. Kasi meron doon deposition of the immune immunoglobulin A or IgA. Pero ang universal sign, no? Pag nakita mo yung sign na yon, alam mo na hinoxion lane purpura na. So ano ang sign na dapat hanapin mo? Your palpable palpable purpura. Next, uh condition um manifesting as vasculitis is cryoglobulinemia. Cryoglobulinemia is actually a syndrome no, which involves the deposition of an abnormal plasma protein called cryoglobulin. And cryoglobulin makes your blood hyperviscous. Kaya makikita mo yan sa laboratory pag uh, tag dito, 
nag-centrifuge ka, mayroong mga depos deposition of um, tag dito, heavy protein sa ilalim. Okay? And kasama ito sa mga tag dito, spectrum of disorder involved in Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia. And dito sa case na to, ang mga purpura present around the ankles. Bakit kaya? Kasi it is being pushed down by gravity. Kasi mabigat nga itong uh, protein na to. So madalas makikita mo sila dun sa mga lower limbs mo. Okay? Next etiology are your vascular obstructions. So, we have thrombus and embolus. So, paano ulit yan na form? Balik tayo sa ating general pathology. No? So, normal blood flow is usually one way lang. No? Kapag nagkaroon ng abnormality in the flow, such as in your blood vessel, um, dito, blood vessel or valve problem, nagkakaroon tayo ng thrombus. Naiipon ngayon yung ating blood together with the blood cells together with your platelets. No? Mabubuo ngayon yung thrombus inside the uh, blood vessel. Ngayon kapag na-dislodge na itong thrombus, ito na ang tinatawag nating embolus. And this embolus is much more uh, fatal kasi kaya mag-travel nito across the body. Fatal siya sa brain, no? It it may it may cause stroke. Pwedeng pumunta rin yan sa heart that may cause endocarditis, no? Pwedeng pumunta yan sa lungs, causing pulmonary embolus na sobrang bilis, no? Kakamatay ng pasyente kapag hindi nabigyan ng attention or treatment. Okay, let's proceed with the category of obstructions. No? We have thrombus and emboli nga. And meron pa tayong iba't ibang um, etiology of obstruction na didiscuss natin mamaya. So, unahin natin ang thrombus. The main component of your thrombus are your blood clots. No? Blood cells with aggregation of platelets. And this is associated during DIC. DIC means disseminated intravascular coagulopathy. This will be discussed later on. Next is embolus. So, mga, meron tayong iba't ibang types. We have septic emboli. Septic emboli means um, merong kasamang bacterial element. No? May, pwede yung toxins. Mga yan. And this is um, primarily um, cause endocarditis. So, balik tayo with your bacte. Ano ang most common cause of your acute endocarditis. Your acute endocarditis is from staphylococcus or use. Next is thromboemboli that can be seen in atrial fibrillation. So, ano nangyayari sa thromboemboli? So, basically, we have a thrombus, no? Tapos, may nag-travel out from other place na emboli. Okay. So, na-stuck siya dun sa place ng thrombus kasi nga wala naman ng ibang space to pass through. So, that's what we call a combination of a thrombus and a emboli. Next naman is FATS. And nangyayari yan during fat emboli syndrome or madalas din yan sa mga patient with fracture. Uh, kasi, di ba, meron tayong fat deposition, lalo na sa mga ating mga uh, big bones, no? Bones as actually contains not only your red marrow, but also your yellow marrow. And yellow marrow is, um, contains your fats. Kapag nasira yon yung bone, dumalabas ngayon yung yellow marrow, it will travel across the blood vessel. Okay? And then others, so mayroon tayong mga abnormal proteins such as yung cryoglobulin and cryofibrinogen, lalo na pag madaming uh, fibrin deposits. And then kapag abnormal yung levels of your RBC such as in polycythemia vera, it may cause obstruction as well. And also in thrombo, 
uh, cytosis. Remember, in thrombocytosis, madami nga yung platelets but it is also non-functional. No? So, lahat ng yan may cause vascular obstruction. Next naman, this, uh, the following are your disorders of perivascular tissues. Unahin natin yung mga hereditary or namamanang disorders such as your Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome involves hyperextensible skin, no? kaya ang ma-extend no? away from the body, hypermobile joints, and bleeding tendencies. And the uh, genet genetic mutation in Ehlers-Danlos is the deficiency of your peptidase. And peptidase is involved in the activation of the, of the type 3 collagen. So, kung deficient ka sa peptidase, deficient ka rin sa type 3 collagen mo. So, in actuality, no, ito yung ating actual patient na may hyperextensible skin. No? And then, meron din kayong, siguro some of your classmates can do this trick, no? Meron hyper mobile joints sa lang lang na sa thumb area. Okay? Baka no, mosaic form kayo ng Ehlers-Danlos. Ang ibig sabihin ng mosaic form, it is not a full form of the disease. Next is your pseudocentoma elast elasticum or PXE. It is also known as Cronblad Strandberg syndrome. So trying hard maging German. Anyway, genetic mutation naman natin dito is calcification of elastic fibers due to the accumulation of fibroblasts. So, naninigas yung mga elastic fibers or therefore walang elasticity no, dun sa ating blood vessels. And kailangan yung elasticity na yon para magdilate and magpump ng mabuti yung blood so that yung blood flow mag maganda. Okay? The presentation in patient is usually yung meron arteriosclerosis or uh, sclerosis means hardening. No? So, pag naninigas yung arteries, no, nagkakaroon ng narrowing of the lumen of the artery. Okay? So, madalas sa mga to, nagkakaroon sila ng hypertension. No? The next, plucked chicken skin. So, imagine niyo yung chicken na tinanggalan natin ng ng feather. So, may makikita, yung makikita nyo yung balat niya is very rough and elevated. And then, next, claudication. Ano ibig sabihin ng claudication? Ang patient na merong PXE, no, nagkakaroon ng pain or cramping immediately after the initiation of exercise. Madali siyang mag mangalay or mag, even magkaroon ng pain sa mga muscles. Well, this is due to the decreased blood flow dahil nga numinipis yung ating mga arteries during PXE. So, so ito yung tinatawag nating pluck chicken skin appearance and madalas silang makita around the neck of the patient. Lalo na sa may mga PXE. No? And then, under microscope, ito yung normal na blood vessel natin. Yung blue wavy or uh, hair-like strands na to, these are your elastic fibers. Kapag meron kang PXE, nawawala itong mga to, no? So, nagkakaroon lang ng ganitong appearance under microscope. Malaki ang difference niyan. Next, Condition is scurvy. Scurvy is actually the deficiency of your ascorbic acid or vitamin C. So, kailangan itong um, compound na to for the hydroxylation of procollagen to convert this into an active form called collagen. No? Procollagen is inactive pa kasi. So, kailangan niyan i-activate using ascorbic acid. And this abnormal collagen, no, kapag wala kang ascorbic acid, can result to capillary fragility, no, 
uh, delayed wound healing and bleeding tendencies which can be seen as uh, bleeding gums. Yan. Ito yung example of a scurvy. So, anong difference between your gingivitis and scurvy? Di ba sa gingivitis, usual, usual yan, no? dumudugo during, uh, like dito, habang nagtutut brush ka. Kapag so, ang um, patient mo na may gingivitis, yan, pag may trauma, no? pag kumakain ng food, yan, kapag kumahagat ng mga, alam ba, apples, may makikita kang bleed, no? baka gingivitis lang yon. In scurvy, kahit walang um, intervention, kahit hindi ka nagtutut brush, hindi ka humakain, nagbi-bleed yung gums mo. So, yun ang main difference between your gingivitis and scurvy. Next is senile purpura or also known as solar purpura or actinic purpura. And the main cause of senile purpura is the loss of collagen and elastin. Senile means being old. Okay? So, madalas yan makita sa mga elderly. And may kita mo sa mga kamay nila, ganito. No? May mga, kung may mga lola at lolo kayo, no? doon sa bahay nyo, ma-appreciate nyo itong mga spots ng nila. And this is actually purpura. No? And specifically, your senile purpura. Okay. But we have to take note, no? We, Elderly are more predisposed to thrombosis rather than bleeding tendencies actually. No? Kaya hindi sila pwedeng bigyan ng mga, kunya, pag may purpura, ibig sabihin, di ba, may bleeding. So, magbibigay ka ng mga clot former medication para hindi magbleed. Pero, ang mga elderly, bawal sa mga ganong gamot dahil mas predisposed sila to thrombosis. No? So, mas kailangan nila actually na clot uh, thinner, no? Rather than the clot former medications. Next naman, purpura associated with infection. Balikan natin yung ating bakte, no? Favorite subject natin na bakte. So, number one, ano ang etiologic agent for purpura fulminans? This is caused by your Neisseria meningitidis. No, naalala nyo yung sa meningococcemia, pag malala na, no, nagkakaroon ng uh, head to toe purpura. O tinatawag natin purpura fulminans. Next naman, what is the causative agent of rat bite fever? It is caused by Streptobacillus moniliformis. So, ibang rat bite fever sa black plague. Okay? Ang black plague is actually caused by the rat fleas. No? Yung mga uh, flea in their, sa body ng rats. While your rat bite fever, it is derived from the saliva of the rats. Okay? Next naman is Brazilian purpuric fever. So, sino nag-cause nito? Kung maalala nyo, it is caused by Haemophilus Influenzae subspecies aegypticus. So, hopefully, natatandaan nyo itong bakte natin, no? Okay. Next, viral hemorrhagic fever naman. It is basically, most, ang most common na positive agent is dengue virus, right? Lalo na sa Philippines. And pagdating sa mga African countries, yellow fever virus and Ebola virus. Balik tayo with virology. Anong mga family nitong mga to? So, ang dengue virus and yellow fever virus belongs to the same family called Flaviviridae. While your Ebola virus belongs to Filoviridae. So, nice to know lang naman yan. And may microvirus naman na kayo. So, alam yun na yan, supposedly. Okay, ang dami kong nabanggit na conditions, right? Pero... Ito ang mga board exam must know. So, be better start right now, no? Kung may time kayo, gawa na kayo ng mga, ano to, tarpaulin, uh, manila paper na may mga nakasulat ng mga notes, okay? So, panahon na. This is the best time to start your collection of manila papers with board exam must know. This is the best time kasi pagdating sa internship, May face-to-face -face na sobrang busy na yon, Okay?
Punahin natin ito no. Hulaan natin ano yung mga disorder na to. Number 1, lax peptidase which converts procollagen to collagen and ang uh, manifestation is increased vascular fragility. So ano yan? It is the Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Next naman, increased fibroblast in elastic fibers causing calcified and stiff vessels. So this is Pseudosantoma elasticum. Next question, deficiency in vitamin C which is needed for collagen synthesis. And uh, in patient, it, it is commonly seen at, as bleeding gums. So this is scurvy. Next, there is a degradation of collagen and elastin most commonly seen in old patients. Old yan. So, this is probably the senile purpura. Next naman, also known as osler weber Rendu disease. And in this uh, disease, the vessels are so thin due to lack of smooth muscle. Um, this is the most common inherited vascular disorder. Hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia. Okay, next naman, uh, quantitative problems naman tayo. Unahin natin yung low platelet count or also known as thrombocytopenia. We have five mechanisms of uh, causing your thrombocytopenia. Unahin natin yung decreased production. Sa decreased production, we have aplastic anemia. Aplastic anemia means there is a low to low nor uh, low production of all blood vessels. I am means absence, plasia means production. So, absence of production. And uh, we have thrombopoietic disorders as well. No, meron tayong problem dun sa thrombopoiesis solely. So, discuss natin yan mamaya. Increased loss or destruction by immune cause. So, meron tayong involved na immune system problem. So, ano itong mga to? We have DIC or Disseminated Intravascular Coagulopathy, ITP or Immune Thrombocytopenic Purpura, and we have Drug-Induced Thrombocytopenia, and PTP or Post-Transfusion Purpura. Sa non-immune cause naman, without the involvement of antibodies or immune system, so ano mga under na condition dito, we have health syndrome and TTP. TTP is thrombocytopenic, uh, thrombotic, thrombocytopenic purpura and HUS or hemolytic uremic syndrome. Next naman, your abnormal distribution of platelets. So, we have dilutional loss, hyperspinism, and spinomegaly. And lastly, your artifactual thrombocytopenia or pseudo-thrombocytopenia or false thr thr thrombocytopenia. We have platelet camping and platelet satellitism. So, unahin natin si decreased production. Decreased production, i-divide natin into three, congenital, acquired, and idiopathic. In congenital means meron tayong hereditary cause, no? may genetic mutation. Unahin natin si Fanconi's anemia. In Fanconi's anemia, we have a plastic anemia na may physical malformation, lalo na na sa face, no? meron cleft palate, ganyan, um, tag dito, uh, um, merong malformation dun sa skull, okay? kakaroon ng uh, meron ding mga physical malformation sa upper and lower limbs. Okay, next is cancer susceptibility. Mapapansin mo sa mga may fanconis anemia, meron ng blood cancer, may liver cancer, may brain cancer. Okay? So, yan mga, yung triad na to, it would point to your fanconis anemia. Next are also congenital cause of thrombocytopenia. Uh, your was or viscot 
Aldrich syndrome and May Heglin anomaly. So di discuss natin ito mamaya no to, sa next few slides. In acquired de decreased production, it is also uh, it is almost always caused by treatment or therapy. No? Sa mga may cancer, it is also all, uh, it is caused by chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Sa mga nag-take ng chloramphenicol, chloramphenicol is actually a treatment used for salmonella um, infection. Salmonella typhi or in typhoid fever. Pero hindi na yun masyadong ginagamit because chloramphenicol may cause a plastic anemia. And the next, benzene which is a component of your gasoline. Okay? Benzene also cause, causes um, a plastic anemia. And lastly, your idiopathic, which is most common. Ano ibig sabi na idiopathic? Idiopathic means unknown etiology. No, hindi pa nalalaman or wala pa talaga ang theory behind the decreased production. So this is actually the most common um, mechanism ng decreased production of your platelets. Okay, discuss natin si Wiscott Aldrich syndrome. It is a triad of thrombocytopenia, immunodeficiency, and eczema. So we have the mnemonic TIE, T I E. Okay. So the genetic cause in Wiscott Aldrich syndrome is the deficiency of your WASP or the WASP protein. And this protein is involved in the development of your platelets. Kapag wala ka nito, nagkakaroon ng reduce in number and the size of your platelets. So, ang term dyan is microthrombocytopenia. Ano naman yung Mendelian inheritance pattern ng Scott Aldrich syndrome? It is X-link recessive. X-link. Kapag X-link, always males are commonly affected. Bakit recessive? Di ba? Recessive is loss of function. Madalas dyan kapag may deficiencies. So, X-link recessive yung mga yan. Next is May Heglin anomaly. Sa May Heglin anomaly, there is a pre disordered precipitation of your myosin he heavy chains found in your endoplasmic reticulum. And the main cause of this precipitation is a defect in the gene called MYH9. And overall, no, makikita mo sa patient, there is thrombocytopenia due to the premature release of the platelet from the um, bone marrow. And meron tayong giant platelet. So overall, no, meron kang thrombocytopenia and giant platelet. So ang term dyan ay macrothrombocytopenia. Okay? So, mong magpapalito in Wiscott Aldrich syndrome, we have micro. Sa May Heglin, we have macrothrombocytopenia. And sa blood smear nila, ma-appreciate natin yung dole bodies. These dole bodies can be found inside the cytoplasm of the neutrophils. Okay, sa neutrophil sila makikita, hindi sa platelet. And dolly bodies are actually rows of rough endoplasmic reticulum. So, ito yan, yung mga naka-encircled structure. Also, in this picture, no? um, this is actually a neutrophil with dolly bodies. Next group of uh, conditions fall into this type of mechanism. Increased loss or destruction due to immune cause. Generally, ang cause ng thrombocytopenia is antibody related. No? So, tingnan natin muna yung first condition. DIC or Disseminated Intravascular Coagulopathy. So, this is not a Final disease. No, this 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 is just a part of a bigger problem. Okay? Ano ang meron sa DIC? So, unang una, magkakaroon ng destruction muna ng mga blood vessel via immune mechanism. 
And then yung destruction ng vessels na yun, it will activate the coagulation pathway. So, una muna, syempre gagawa ng platelet plug. So, mauubos muna si platelets. And then, after that, mauubos din yung mga coagulation factors mo. Dahil, extensive yung damage sa mga vessels. So, extensive din yung consumption mo ng platelets. And at the same time, ng co coagulation factors. Kaya, ang tawag din natin doon sa pangalan niya is disseminate intravascular coagulopathy. Dahil nga, mayroon din tayong problem dun sa coagulation pathway. And this DIC, sabi nga kanina, no, it is a part of a bigger problem. So, anong mga disease or condition uh, na associated with DIC? Unang-una dyan, ating mga hemorrhagic viral syndromes na discuss natin kanina, right? Yung dengue virus, yellow fever, and Ebola. And actually, DIC is the most common cause. MCC is most common cause, okay? Most common cause of death in dengue hemorrhagic syndrome. No, dito sila namamatay actually. Dahil, yun nga, ah, extensive na yung, yung pagkaubos ng platelets and coagulation, hindi na nakokontrol yung bleeding and therefore, uh, matindi na yung blood loss, so doon sila namamatay. Okay? Next naman is gram-negative bacterial infection. Kung maalala ninyo, no, back in your um, bakte, gram-negative bacteria carries what type of toxin? Your endotoxin. And this endotoxin will activate uh, this massive destruction of your vessels imitating DIC. Okay, so implicated din ang DIC in endotoxemia. Next naman sa mga pregnant women, no, madalas nagkakaroon sa ng DIC lalong-lalo na sa mga cases with preeclampsia. Okay? Ano ulit ang preeclampsia? Ito yung mga pregnant women na nag-release ng proteins through their urine. So malaking problem ang proteinuria sa pregnant women. Next naman, yung microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Ano ulit ang mga example natin dito? Ito yung mga TTP or thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura and your HUS or hemolytic uremic syndrome. So, mamaya i-discuss natin na bakit implicated si DIC dun sa dalawang condition na yun. And lastly, ipapatake note ko sa inyo is at a type of leukemia wherein DIC is involved. This is the M3 type of AML or acute um, acute myelogenous leukemia type M3. In WHO or FAB classification, yung French American British classification, ang ibig sabihin ng M3 is acute promyelocytic leukemia. So, isa yan sa mga cause of death ng mga may ganitong type of leukemia. To simplify the process of disseminated intravascular coagulation. So, ganito nangyayari. No? In this uh, patients, nagkakaroon ng mas maraming formation of clots rather than the breakdown of clot. So, walang balance. Okay? Walang homeostasis dun sa clot formation. Anong ibig sabihin ngayon ng maraming clot formation? Okay? So, number one, um, dahil nga widespread yung clot, di, clotting, nagkakaroon ng uh, thrombus or obstruction dun sa ating mga beses. Pag nagkaroon ng ganitong obstruction, Walang blood flow na pupunta sa mga organs causing ischemia or loss of blood supply and oxygenation. So, namamatay yung mga organs ng mga pasyenteng suffering from DIC. Next naman, uh, dahil nga mad uh, madami or extensive yung vessel injury, extensive din ang clot formation through depletion, no? of the clotting factors. Pag naubos natin lahat ng clotting factors, at the same time, the platelets as well, no? nagkakaroon na ng bleeding. So, hindi na makasabay yung 
uh, injury dun sa clot formation or dun sa dust of clotting factors. So, two ways sila na mamatay, no? Through ischemia and extensive bleeding. Next, must know ito, no? How to analyze DIC using the laboratory test. So, as a screening test, ito yung usual in order no? Platelet count is expected to be low dahil nga dun sa platelet consumption. PBS will show schistocytes. Schistocytes are RBC that shape as parang mga helmet cells. Okay? Bleeding time, cutting time, PT and PTT are all prolonged. Bleeding time is prolonged dahil nasisira niya yung mga vessels. So, therefore, in vascular integrity is, dam uh, is damaged. Therefore, prolonged ang bleeding time. So, clotting time, PT and PTT are all prolonged dahil na-consume mo na yung iyong mga um, clotting factors. So, ibig sabihin, mas prolonged ang clot formation. As confirmatory, no, halimbawa, hindi ka pa rin sure kung nag-DIC yung pasyente mo, you can do D-dimer levels. D-dimer naman is actually a final product of your fibrinolysis. So, discuss natin yan mamaya. So, I have said a while ago, D-dimer is one of the final products of fibrin degradation. So, based in this diagram, no? Halimbawa, nabuo na yung platelet uh, plug, nagkaroon ng coagulation process, nabuo ang stable fibrin. Ang stable fibrin hindi yan magtatagal. No? Kailangan niya ma-degrade eventually. Okay? Kasi clot yan. No? Dapat ma-maintain natin as liquid yung ating blood. So, itong solid component na to na clot must undergo fibrinolysis with the use of the plasminogen plasmin complex. So, plasmin I degrade yung fibrin into simpler products and one of the products is actually D-dimer. And yung D-dimer is madaling madetect through laboratory testing. So, bakit ito ginagamit in DIC? So, yun nga, ang sabi ko nga, dun, balik tayo dun sa ating um, diagram a while ago. Dahil mas maraming clot na nafo-form during DIC, mas marami ka rin ma-appreciate na D-dimer sa blood uh, circulation ng pasyente. Kaya, definitive or confirmatory test talaga ang D-dimer in cases of DIC. Next condition is ITP. ITP, previously, no, ang pangala, ang dating meaning yan is idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. And again, idiopathic means unknown etiology. So, hindi pa natin alam before. So, ngayon, alam na, no? Nung college student pa lang ako, idiopathic pa rin yung pangalan niya. Pero, nung after 2 to 3 years, immune na. So, dami. Dahil na-established na na ang autoantibodies against platelets is the one causing the thrombocytopenia in patients with ITP. So, sa mga bata... This is the most common cause of thrombocytopenia. So, kwento ko lang, if ever, no, may darating na patient na bata and ito yung mga implicated condition. Halimbawa, nagkaroon ng cough and colds, urti means upper respiratory tract infection. So, ang mga may uh, patient na nagsasuffer ng urti, madalas cough and colds yung mga yan. Okay? And sometimes, yung mga nage lbm due to gastrointestinal infection. So, madalas, if ever, ang litaw ng kanilang CBC is mababa ang platelets, you suspect that they suffer from ITP. Next, yung mga viral infection natin. Balikan nga natin ating virology. No? 
infectious mononucleosis. Sino ang may causative agent dyan? Actually, marami yan. No? And one of the major cause of infectious mon mononucleosis is EBV or Epstein-Barr virus. So, sa measles naman, sino ang causative agent? The specific rubiola virus. Chicken pox is caused by your virus, varicella virus. And your rubella or German measles is caused by your toga viridae family. And also, one of the side effects of vaccination among children is thrombocytopenia. Pero self-limiting naman to, no? Ang ibig sabihin self-limiting, kung saan naman nawawala. Okay? Ano yung mga type of vaccine na nagkakos ng thrombocytopenia in children? So, ito yung mga yan. OPV is actually oral polio vaccine, yung pinapatak sa mga bata na pang polio. Influenza vaccine is yung lalong lalo na yung intranasal hindi yung hindi involved dito yung ano yung mga injectables na intramuscular so hindi yun live virus ang live virus yung uh, pinapasok sa ilong or tinatawag na intranasal influ, flu vaccine and MMR ano yung MMR measles mumps rubella vaccine so ito yung mga live vi virus uh, uh, type of vaccination natin na aaralin nyo rin pagdating sa IS. So, iwan ko muna yung virus sa virology, vaccination sa sa IS. Okay? Ang, ang focus lang natin dito is merong thrombocytopenia in these cases. Okay? Pag naglabas ako ng case study na involve ang children at merong mga ganitong history, sa patient, ITP ang sagot. Okay? So, next is drug-induced thrombocytopenia. So, na-discuss natin kanina yung chloramphenicol and your um, benzene. So, chloramphenicol and benzene causes bone marrow toxicity. So, therefore, decrease yung production ng mga blood cells kasama dyan ang platelet. Okay? Pero si heparin, very specific sa, sa platelet. So, paano yan nangyayari? So, paano ito nangyayari? Uh, halimbawa, ito yung platelet natin and it contains the receptors called PF4 or platelet factor 4. So, if ever ang patient natin ay nag-take ng heparin, some of the complexes will form a binding uh, relationship with the platelet 4. Okay? So, ganito ang, mag, ang binding yan. Pero uh, may, may problem tayo dyan. So, the binding of heparin and your platelet factor 4 will tend to initiate the immunoglobulins. No? So, ang, ang tingin ngayon ng immunoglobulins mo na foreign body itong complex na to. So, tatargetin niya yung mga platelets na may binding of heparin plus your platelet factor 4. Pero, may implication naman yun. Uh, rather than targeting only this part of the binding, it also tend to target the other platelets na wala namang kamalay-malay dun sa complex binding na to. Kahit walang ganitong binding na na ta-target sila ay na de destroy So therefore, it, it heparin ang um, ang heparin induced thrombocytopenia is a uh, destruction due to immune cause. So in books such as Rodax, iba na yung pangalan ng HIT. Ito na yung recent name niya, heparin induced thrombocytopenia with thrombosis. Bleeder na platformer pa. So, paano ito nangyayari? So, yun nga, ang pagiging bleeder niya is due to thrombocytopenia, which is generally caused by the in inhibition of the platelet factor 4. 
And then thrombosis, yung pagiging clot former, is brought about by heparin resistance. Ano nga ba talaga yung mechanism of action yan? The real mechanism of action is that, that heparin activates the antithrombin to inhibit thrombin formation. Pero dahil nga may resistance, hindi na ito nangyayari. Okay? So, um, itong part of thrombotic problem ay ipapasa ko na pagdating natin sa pre-final term natin. Okay? Uh, ako ulit ang magtuturo nito. So, babalikan natin itong thrombotic part of the HITT. Okay. So, basically, we have three types of heparin na available in the market. So, we have unfractionated heparin or UFH, LMWH or low molecular weight heparin, and fondaparinux. In terms of their size, the smallest size is LMW, LMWH, no? from the name itself, low molecular weight. And then, um, sino naman sa kanila yun nagkakost ng HIT? So, yung UFH, LMWH can cause HIT, okay? And this um, side effect, no, nung pinag-aralan ng mga scientists, so, nag-develop sila ng panibagong heparin na hindi na nagkakos ng HIT, which is, ito yung newest form, your fondaparinux. So, dito na, wala na, wala na tayo ma-appreciate na uh, HIT effect, dito sa klase ng gamot na to. Okay? Uh, another, uh, tag dito, information about this uh, types of heparin, no? Dahil nga ang heparin, madaming side effect, no? Meron tayong monitoring uh, test dito. Ang UFH, kailangan ng APTT monitoring. While yung mga newer types of heparin, hindi na kailangan. In terms of toxicity, meron naman tayong available na Antidote. And this antidote is called protamine sulfate. Ngayon, sino sa kanila yung madalas nagkakos ng toxic effects? So, ang UFH and your LMWH, ito nga yung nagkakos ng HIT. So, kailangan nila ng um, antidote such as yung ating protamine sulfate. While in the newer heparin called fondaparinox, hindi na kailangan. So, mas madaling gamitin ngayon si fondaparinox in our patients. In assessment of HIT, so pwede, kayo, pwede tayo mag-screening test using platelet count and aggregometry. But for gold standard and reference method, so gina pag kailangan gamitin in research purposes. So, ito yung gold standard na gagamitin. Serotonin release assay. Next is PTP or post-transfusion purpura. So, dito sa um, condition na to, sino ang may sala? Yung donor ng dugo or taga-receive ng dugo? So, alamin natin which, what is the usual clinical setting in PTP. The donor has HPA or the human platelet antigen. The recipient develops alloantibodies against HPA. Ngayon yung antibodies na yun will target all the platelets uh, that is found in the blood bag. So, uh, sisirain niya, therefore, mawawala ngayon yung mga platelet na dapat i-receive niya. So, sino ang may sala sa dalawa? Si donor ba o si recipient? Si recipient yung may sala. Dahil si, ang HPA is actually a natural occurring antigen. No? Natural yan. Hin, uh, lagi tayong meron yan. Ang hindi normal is to develop antibodies against it. Okay? So, uh, sino pa yung may mga at risk for this kind of condition? Number one, Women who are multiparous. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng multiparous? Sila yung madami ng anak. No? Ano yung ibig sabihin natin, natin ng madami ng anak? Um, in operational definition, more than 5 children is already multiparous. Bakit nagkakaroon ng PTP in uh, multiparous women? 
So, sa dami ng anak nila, no, madami, rin si, madami na rin siya na-expose na fetal cells during during birth. no uh, And then, itong mga fetal blood na to will help the uh, mother to develop antibodies against the fetal blood. Okay? So, mas kawawa ngayon yung mga succeeding, uh, ano niya, um, tag dito, children niya. Okay? So, mas nagde-develop ngayon ng antibodies si mother. So, sa mga later pregnancies niya, mas lalong prone siya mag to, be, to develop PTP. Next, eto nga, who, patients who underwent several blood transfusions, no? Nalilito na ngayon yung immune system niya kung magde-develop ba o hindi. Kasi iba't iba yung mga antigen na, na present sa mga blood bags. Okay, tapos na tayo sa mga immune cause of thrombocytopenia. Punta naman tayo sa mga non-immune cause or wala ang kinalaman ang antibodies or immunoglobulins. So, sino ang may sala? Titinan natin yan. Unahin natin si health syndrome. Health syndrome stands for yung age, hemolysis. EL is elevated liver enzyme. LP is low platelet. So, para mas madaling tandaan, these are the three criteria to diagnose this syndrome. Kailangan may ongoing hemolysis, may uh, presence of elevated liver enzymes, and low platelets. So, paano natin yan gag uh, I-request sa ating laboratory. To check for hemolysis, you have to check also for the hemoglobin levels. And you have to expect the low um, levels of hemoglobin. Yung elevated, elevated liver enzymes naman natin, pwede ka, ka mag-request na lang ng ASTALT. And usually, high itong mga to. And then, for the low platelet, syempre platelet count. So, low ang ina-expect mong results. Okay? For in, so, therefore, in HELP syndrome, tatlo lang yung pwede mong i-request. Hemoglobin, ACLT, and platelet count. So, balik tayo ulit dito. No? Um, HELP syndrome is seen in... In patients with preeclampsia. And preeclampsia nangyayari yan sa mga buntis na umiihi ng um ng umiihi na kasama ang proteins which is what you term as proteinuria. Okay? So anong kasama dito sa preeclampsia um spectrum na to? So um, unang-unang nangyayari dito is that there is a microvascular injury. Maliliit na blood vessels. Uh, and then, kapag extensive na yung mga injury sa mga maliliit na blood vessels, nagkakaroon na tayo ng hemolysis, no? Extravasation of blood from this uh, vascular injury. Kapag nagkakaroon, yun nga, pag nagkaroon ng matinding vascular injury, so, magres mag rescue ang ating mga platelets, pero kung madami na yung mga sites ng uh, blood vessel injury, mauubos ang mga platelets mo. So, therefore, low platelets ang expected natin dito. And then, dahil nga hindi na makapag uh, jive or hindi na makapag comply yung ating mga platelets dun sa injury, tuloy-tuloy yung hemolysis, nagkakaroon ngayon na multi-organ microvascular injury. And one of the organs na sensitive sa microvascular injury is your liver. Dahil nga, ang liver is a reservoir of your blood. Okay? So, supposedly, dapat madaming blood doon. Pero, walang pumupunta na blood doon dahil nga, pangit yung blood flow dahil dito sa blood, blood vessel injury. So, nagkakaroon ng liver problem called hepatic necrosis. Namamatay yung mga liver cells. Kaya, therefore, ang expected mo na laboratory finding sa liver function test is that it, uh, you, 
it will show elevated liver enzymes. Katulad ng kanina na sinabi ko, AST and ALT is expected to be high in preeclampsia and HELP syndrome. Okay, next group of conditions that is related to non-immune destruction are these two uh, uh, syndrome. Unang unahin natin ito, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. Thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, purpura manifest as microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. No? Nag-anemia ka na. Meron ka pang thrombocytopenia. And from the name itself, meron ka rin purpuric rashes. What is the pathogenesis of TTP? This is due to the deficiency of your Adam TS13. Ito ay kailangan to activate your cutting factor called von Willebrand factor. So kapag no, hindi na-activate si von Willebrand factor, hindi mo ma uh, hindi ka gana yung coagulation pathway. So therefore bleeder ka. So nagkakaroon ka ng hemolytic anemia. So, and then, yung mga nasisira mong beses, kaya try i-save ng mga platelets. So, therefore, may platelet consumption. And kapag walang nabubuong uh, platelet plug or stable fibrin, leader ka. So, nagkakaroon ng purpuric rashes. Okay? So, next condition naman tayo. Hemolytic uremic syndrome. May hemolytic anemia, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. So, and then, meron ka rin thrombocytopenia. And uremic. So, uremic means anything about your kidneys. No? Meron tayong acute renal failure. And this HUS is brought about by a bacterial infection, specifically your enterohemorrhagic Escherichia coli or EHEC strain 0157H7. This strain um, contains or nagdadala siya ng toxin that na kamukha ng shigella. Kaya ang tawag is shiga toxin. Okay? And this uh, this type of toxin is an endotoxin. Okay? So, kaya mas grabe siya, mas fatal, mas severe in destroying blood vessels. So, eh, ano naman yung kanilang pagkakaparehas? They both cause thrombocytopenia through non-immune cause. And this non-immune cause is specifically the microangiopathy. Micro means small, angio means vessels, pathy is a disorder or disease. So, a disease of small blood vessels. So, next group of mechanisms naman tayo. Abnormal distribution of platelets or abnormal pooling of platelets. So, isa dyan yung mga, ito, dilutional loss, hyperspinism, and spinomegaly. So, halimbawa, nasa gasaan ka, wag naman sana, no? And kailangan mo ng madaming blood bags. And after that, uh, ang doktor ina-expect na mataas ang CBC or platelet count mo dahil madami nang na, na transfuse sa'yo na blood bag. Pero, hindi pa rin tumaas. So, ano nangyari? You might consider a dilutional loss. Okay. Dilutional loss happens in patient who are who receive massive blood transfusion. Ano ang operational definition ng massive blood, blood transfusion? Uh, the patient received 15 to 20 units within 24 hours. No, ganyan karami blood bags. Pero bakit even na madami even though na madaming blood bags, bakit pa rin hindi hindi to mataas ang platelet count this is due to uh, number 1 ang blood bag ay hindi na hindi nakalagay sa room temperature 
di ba, ang madalas na storage area ng ating mga cool blood is refrigerated uh, area. So, kailangan, para mag-function pa rin ang platelet, kailangan nasa room temp at hindi mag-induce ng platelet clumping. Okay? And another is that, Uh, the platelet should be in an agitator. No? Kailangan na shake pa rin yung blood kasi uh, prone nga sa platelet clumping yung mga platelets inside the blood bag. And madalas sa mga blood bag sa refrigerator nasa stagnant position lang. So therefore, lahat ng naibibigay sa pasyente nagiging defective or nasisira lang. Next is hypersplenism and splenomegaly. This both um, condition causes thrombocytopenia. So, halimbawa, no, splenomegaly. Splenomegaly strictly refers to the size, no? enlargement lang ng spleen. But kapag yung activity ang pinag-uusapan, halimbawa overactivity, hypersplenism ang better term. This, uh, this two condition will cause an abnormal pooling. Ano ibig sabihin ng abnormal pooling? Di ba ang ating no normal distribution of platelets is that two-thirds dapat ang nasa bloodstream, one-third lang ang nasa spleen. Kapag napagbaligtad natin to, nagkakaroon nga tayo ng abnormal pooling. And this um, exchange of values nangyayari in these two condition. Pag lumaki ang spleen, mas maraming storage area for platelet. Kapag hyperspinism naman, overactive, so kain siya ng kain ng platelet sa loob. So, nag therefore, nagiging baligtad yung ratio. And lastly, our artifactual thrombocytopenia or meron tayong term dyan na pseudothrombocytopenia. Pseudo means false. So, hindi talaga totoong may thrombocytopenia ang pasyente. So, one of the weird phenomenon that is happening in pseudothrombocytopenia is platelet satellitism. Your platelet tends to surround the neutrophil. Ano yung tawag natin? Rosetting. No? Parang they form a rosette form or parang flower floweret formation. Okay? Paano ito nangyayari? Uh, ang blood sample mo ay ginamitan mo ng EDTA preservative. And sometimes, no, EDTA tends to um, initiate IgG coating of your platelets and this coating will uh, bind to the receptors found in your WBC. Okay. Madikit, so, nakakaroon ng parang madikit na sensation yung platelet towards the IgG and these two complexes nagiging madikit ulit towards the WBC's membrane. Lalong-lalo na sa mga neutrophils. Okay. So, anong gagawin mo para ma-prevent natin yung ganitong type of phenomenon? You recollect na lang using sodium citrate which is okay pa rin naman. Next naman to our quantitative problem is thrombocytosis. Cytosis me, osis means increase or predominance of thrombocyte or platelet. So, in RODAX, ang operational definition is that the platelet count must be over the upper limit of 450 times 10 to the 9 power per liter of blood. So, yan yung sa Rodax. Okay, mamaya makikita nyo, iba naman ang WHO criteria. Pero, punta muna tayo sa etiology. So, we have two types of thrombocytosis. We have primary thrombocytosis and secondary or reactive thrombocytosis. So, anong difference nila? The cause. Okay? The primary, in primary thrombocytosis, ang main cause main cause niyan is the bone marrow itself. Meron tayong problema mismo sa bone marrow. So, therefore, 
kahit mababa ang levels or normal ang levels ng thrombopoietin mo, which is the hormone signaling for thrombocyte production, uh, overacting pa rin si bone marrow to produce thrombocyte. Even kahit zero na lang ang thrombopoietin mo, gumagana pa rin or nagpo-produce pa rin ng maraming thrombocyte si bone marrow. And this is the primary thrombocytosis. Um, this is also seen in one of the myelodysplastic syndrome called essential thrombocytemia. Sa secondary or reactive thrombocytosis naman, may nangyari which causes your bone marrow to produce a lot of thrombocyte. And one of the signals is that there is a high levels of thrombopoietin which happen in your blood malignancies. And in other causes naman, normal ang thrombopoietin mo, but still madami kang thrombocyte. So, meron tayo abnormal pooling in splenectomy. So, hindi na, ano ang ibig sabihin ng splenectomy? Na, uh, it, it is a surgical removal of your spleen. So, therefore, wala na yung two-thirds, one-third ratio natin. Lahat ngayon ng thrombocyte mo nasa bloodstream mo. So, 100% nasa bloodstream. So, therefore, meron kang mataas na platelet count which is as an example of a secondary thrombocytosis. So, balikan natin si primary thrombocytosis or also known as essential thrombocytemia or essential thrombocytosis. The main cause or genetic mutation in this type of um, problem is there is an alteration of hematopoietic cells. Ang mga cells mo ngayon is overly sensitive to thrombopoietin even in small amounts. Kaya ang laboratory, in laboratory, the expected results are as follows. Madami completed count pero low to normal ang thrombopoietin mo. So we have two criteria. Meron si net si Rodax, meron din si net si WHO. Si Rodax, ang, ang point of upper limit niya is sinagad niya hanggang 600. Okay? So more than 600, the hemoglobin should be less than 13 grams per deciliter with stainable iron in bone marrow. So ito yung kanyang uh, ito, uh, criteria to diagnose primary thrombocytosis. While in WHO criteria, so kailangan lang no, more than 450, your bone marrow shows increased megakaryopoesis only, okay? So, no other um, increased production of other cells. Third is that there must be no cancer cells, myelodysplasia, or any bone marrow neoplasm. And lastly, this is important, no? the final or the confirmatory test, the presence of your JAK2 mutation. Okay? So, take note natin yan. Highlight natin. Yan. Next is the qualitative platelet disorder naman tayo. Last na. Kapit lang tayo guys. Okay? So, qualitative platelet disorder also known as thrombocytemia or thrombocytopathy. So, ginroup ko sila into three. So, we have disorders of platelet adhesion. Disorder of platelet aggregation and disorder of platelet secretion. Unahin natin itong dalawang ito dahil medyo uh, nakakalito sila in terms of aggregometry. So, ano ba ang problem ulit natin? Unahin natin itong Bernard Solier and Von Willebrand disease dahil at this both have problems of platelet adhesion. While your Glanzmann thrombastinia focuses on platelet aggregation problem. So, in terms of deficiency, si Bernard Sulier deficient siya sa 
glycoprotein 1B95, which is a receptor for your von Willebrand disease. So, von Willebrand disease naman, from the name itself, the deficient protein is your von Willebrand factor. Sa glansman trombastin niya naman, the, the deficiency is the glycoprotein 2B3A, which is used as a receptor for your fibrinogen. In terms of aggregation test naman, what are the differences between the, these three conditions? Yung dalawang ito will result to the same aggregation test. No? Uh, abnormal lang sila with restocytin. Normal sila with these three reagents, ADP, collagen, and epinephrine. So, paano natin sila i-differentiate? Kukunin mo ngayon yung levels of the von Willebrand factor. The von Willebrand factor is expected to be normal in Bernard Soulier but decreased in von Willebrand disease. Okay, so yun ang um, point of difference nilang dalawa. And lastly, your Glansman trombastinia naman, normal sa restocytin, abnormal sa ADP, collagen, and epinephrine. So, ito lang ang naiiba sa lahat. So, take note, this table is one of the board exam must know. So, kung may time kayo, gawa na kayo ng Manila paper nyo na may ganitong table. Next naman are your storage pool disorders or yung mga problems with the granules. Balikan natin, we have alpha granules and dense granules, right? The dense granules contains your kapas. Kapas stands for calcium, ADP, pyrophosphate, ATP, and serotonin. All the weird names, no? Doon na sa alpha granules. Okay, punta naman tayo sa disorder. We have four syndrome na ipapamemorize ko sa inyo. Okay? So, uh, sa, sa apat na to, no, iisa lang ang different. No? The gray pleated syndrome only affects your alpha granules while your Hermansky Pudlak, Chejak Higashi, and Wiscott Aldrick affects your dense granules. So, ano naman ang mga manifestation nila? Your gray platelet syndrome affects the uh, tubular system kung saan nare-release yung mismong mga alpha granules. Hermansky-Pudlak naman has a triad of eto, ABC, albinism, no, abnormal melanin depletion, bleeding tendency, and seroid macrophages. Ano ba tong seroid macrophages? Ito yung mga macrophages na may lamang fats or lipid-laden macrophages. Next syndrome is Chajak Higashi syndrome. Again, it it uh, involves abnormal fusion of granules. So not only granules of your platelets, but also the granules of your granulocytes in WBCs, lalang lala yung mga neutrophil, eosinophil, and basophil. So lahat ng cell na con which contains granules apektado ng Chajak Higashi syndrome. Lastly, your Wiscott Aldrich syndrome. So tandaan natin, no, not only it affects the platelet count, it also affects the platelet function, no, lalong lalo na in dense granules natin. Okay? So meron tayong quantitative qualitative problem in Wiscott Aldrich syndrome. Again, what are the triad or triad of symptoms of Wiscott Aldrich syndrome? We have Thai, pneumonics, T for thrombocytopenia, I for immunodeficiency, and E for
for eczema. And lastly, one of the uh, dreaded drugs or medication which causes platelet dysfunction is aspirin. Aspirin causes an irreversible inhibition of your enzyme called cyclooxygenase. So, magsingit lang ako ng another diagram to, uh, tag dito, to picture out the effects of aspirin. So, aspirin again inhibits your cyclooxygenase. So, cyclooxygenase, ang ating naming dito is COX. No? We have two types, COX-1 and COX-2. COX-1 ang specific for your thromboxane A2. And Hindi lang COX-1 ang naapektuhan niya. No? Yung aspirin also targets your COX-2. So, ang dami niyang na, na pre-prevent or na-inhibit na mga um, dito, bodily function. So, madaming effects or bad effects ang aspirin. Not only for the function of the platelet, but also the following, your gastrointestinal tract uh, function, kidneys, Yung mga yan. Okay? So, therefore, aspirin is no longer used in fever anymore. Nabutang ko to nung bata ko, nag aspilet ako. Aspilet is actually a brand name for aspirin. And again, balik tayo, di ba ako nagturo sa inyo, kung mababalikan natin yung liver, sa liver function ng CC, one of the dreaded side effect of aspirin is the dry syndrome. And dry syndrome, again, this is Im uh, implicated in children who was given, were given um, aspirin during a viral infection. So, yan ang dreaded in, uh, side effect niyan. And another uh, important to take note is that aspirin is here to stay. Kasi it is very effective as an anti-inflammatory and anti-thrombotic drug. Ano ibig sabihin anti-thrombosis? It inhibits the clot formation. So, kung babalikan natin, no, the inhibition of the cyclooxygenase will inhibit the thromboxin E2. Therefore, may inhibit yung platelet aggregation natin. So, it's a good thing para sa mga patient na na-stroke, okay, na heart attack, yung mga ganyan. Dahil itong mga patient na to, possible na umulit yung kanilang stroke event. Okay, to prevent that, kailangan wala, uh, magbigay ka ng aspirin para hindi na sila mag-form ng mga clots throughout the blood vessels. Okay? And then, halimbawa, post-stroke patient, nag aspirin Kailangan niya ma-operan, halimbawa lang, no, nagkaroon ng gallstone, kailangan tanggaling ang gallbladder. So, pero may affectation ng aspirin dun sa ating wound healing. Anong gagawin ng mga surgeons ngayon? They will withdraw the aspirin 7 days before the actual procedure. Okay? Kasi 7 days yung half-life ng aspirin para mawala dun sa system ng pasyente yung effect niya. Kasi, uh, dahil nga ito dun sa effect niya na hindi magpo-form ng platelet plug. So, therefore, mahihirapan na mag-heal ang pasyente. So, kailangan, no? Definitely, kailangan tanungin, is there an aspirin intake or nagbe-medicate ba ng aspirin ang pasyente bago ang procedure? And this is the last of my slides. Okay, patawad dahil more than one hour ito. Congratulations sa mga kumapit sa video na to at hindi na Netflix in the middle of the lecture. Don't forget your self-test. Uh, posted na and published dun sa week 5 module tab dun sa canvas natin. Good luck next week and... Gawin natin lahat, no? Pataasin natin ang score natin sa prelims dahil pahirap ng pahirap itong himato. So, good luck and uh, happy learning!